Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning again to our channel today. Today, I want to talk a few minutes about interception. Very, very important because it's one of the most common causes of intestinal obstruction in children. In children, in the first two years of life, is the most frequent cause of intestinal obstruction. It's a very important point to remember. The most frequent cause of intestinal obstruction in the first two years of life is intersusception. It is three times more common in males than in females. Now, in 85% of cases, we don't see an exact cause. But in the remaining 15%, we can find different kinds of causes like uh, lymphoma, lipoma, sometimes parasites, sometimes constipation, foreign bodies, viral enteritis, Meckel's diverticulum, warm flow mesenteric remnant, duplication, small bowel. So those are the main causes that lead to this condition. Now, in children with celiac disease or children with cystic fibrosis, there is bulk formation of the stool in the terminal ileum and these children they develop intersusception. But in children older than six years, lymphoma is the most common cause. So they get lymphoma and uh, the intestine it rolls over itself. The, car the name for it is telescoping. The terminal ileum telescopes into the colon. So in the usual form, the intersusception starts just proximal to the ileocecal valve and extends for varying distances into the colon. And patient can develop complications from this, like swelling or incarceration, arterial and venous compromise, and the necrosis of the intersuscepted ileum intestinal perforation and peritonitis. That's why in many children, like uh, 1 to 2 percent of children, the mortality rate is very, very high, especially when they develop intestinal perforation. Now let us uh, talk about symptoms. The symptoms will be characteristically, it will be a thriving infant, like 6 to 12 months of age and the child develops paroxysms of abdominal pain with the screaming and child draws up the knees. It's like a mother tells you the child pulls her legs up to her abdomen and cries for 5 to 10 minutes and followed by episodes of relaxed silence. And mother tells you that the child is passing blood and mucus in her stools. And the word for it is current jelly stool. That's a very important point to remember. It's current jelly stool. And the other thing is there will be a sausage shaped mass palpated especially in the upper abdomen. In older children they will sometimes spontaneous direction occurs so the patient won't complain of any pain after an attack of very very severe pain. Finally treatment barium enema and air enema they are the two treatments we have available I mean in the non-surgical uh, practice and the other thing is laparotomy doing surgery so barium enema is both diagnostic and uh, therapeutic. What you are actually doing is you are creating hydrostatic pressure and this pressure it reduces the intersusception. And when you see patients in strangulation or in perforation or when you see signs of peritonitis you should not do barium enema. The alternative is air insufflation because air insufflation it, it doesn't have the risk of contaminating the abdominal cavity with barium. 
So whether a barium enema or an insufflation, you should not do them when there is vascular compromise because vascular compromise means necrosis of the bowel and necrosis of bowel means a high propensity for perforation and thereafter peritonitis leading to increased mortality. So when you can't do barium enema or air enema, go for surgery, laparotomy, because surgery has the advantage of identifying things like Meckel's diverticulum. Now prognosis. Prognosis depends on the duration of uh, intersusception before reduction. The mortality rate, as I said earlier, is like 1 to 2 percent. In 3 to 4 percent of patients, intersusception comes back within 24 hours. So there is recurrence in this condition. So basically let me give you a brief overview, brief recap. This intersusception is a very common cause of acute abdominal pain in children between 2 months and 6 years.